1956, Malcolm McLean created the first container ship to hold 58 35 foot containers. It totally revolutionized shipping and cargo handling into what exists today here at the Seagirt Marine Terminal. Before containers, all cargo had to be removed from the trucks or railroad cars that it was transported on and then placed aboard ship. It was hard, time consuming manual labor. Now the cargo is consolidated and moved inside the container. In the Port of Baltimore, this entire maritime industry is very, very competitive across all uh, commodity sectors, but specifically with containers. Uh, with the expansion of the Panama Canal in 2016, uh, we recognized that we were going to have to have the size berth and the size cranes that would be available uh, at Baltimore to handle the larger ships coming through the Panama Canal, up to 12,000 TEUs. Uh, a TEU is a general uh, term used in the industry that, that defines a 20-foot equivalent unit. So a 20-foot container that you may see driving down the highway is known as a TEU. A 40-foot container would be two TEUs. A constant stream of TEUs enter Seagirt every day. And as they do, pre-check clerks enter every one into the system. All right, when we first bring them up, we're checking out the tag number, uh, verifies the insurance and everything that they're registered with the port. And they give us a trucker's code. Uh, trucker's code. This system is essential to control and track the thousands of containers that are processed through Seagirt weekly. All right, number on a load. And a release. That way nobody can just come in here and pick up a random container. Looks good, boss. Have a good one. Once the containers are checked into the system, they pass through a safety inspection before they can go any further. Safety is the biggest factor we got. We do not want nobody to get killed. If it's a break or anything is bro broken on the box, chassis or whatever, we will turn it or stop it or get it repaired. So my job is to make sure you go home the way you come in here. Our lives, it, it depends on the safety of these boxes coming in here safe enough that the top loaders, RTGs can remove them safely and fifth wheel drivers can drive safely with these boxes and chassis going to and from the ships. The cross members are out of line or whatever. The cargo can go straight through the floor if they lift it. Our job is to make sure this does not happen. That's our main goal is to make sure everything is safe, clean, and right. After the container passes inspection, it is taken into the yard and placed in the pile. And we have uh, Keith Parks here, who's a top loader operator for Ports America Chesapeake. He's taking, taking a 20-foot load off of this truck driver can weigh anywhere from 15 to 25 tons, and he will place it in the pile that will be set up for export to go on one of the vessels as they come in, probably within the next week or two. When the ship arrives, the appropriate containers are chosen from the pile and delivered dockside, where the giant cranes pick them up and load them on board. We're going to show you the massive equipment that makes this possible and take you up on the crane. The room that we are standing in is what we call the machine house, and as the name indicate, it houses all of the machines that are used to unload the ships and load the ships. This drum is responsible for what they call the hoist, so the vertical movement, raising and lowering. Now, when we want to put the cargo onto the ship, we have to do a vertical movement. The drum down there is what we call the trolley, and that is what allows the operator to move onto the ship with the cargo. The crane is rated to be able to pick up 65 long tons at a speed of like 290 feet per minute. We have a lot of braking power. In case something were to go wrong, we want to be able to stop it very quickly. This drum is what raises and lowers the boom. When the, when the crane is not being used, we have the boom up so ships can travel underneath it without hitting it. And once the ship is in place, we lower the boom so then we can travel out onto the boom to get over to the ship. Scott took us out where we had a good view of the spreader and then we went into the control cab. First thing I'm going to do is demonstrate the hoist movement, which is the drum, the big drum that we spoke about earlier. This is the controller for the hoist. If everything goes right when I push this down, the brakes are going to open and then we're going to, then we're lowering. The controller, when it's in the center, that's like setting the brakes. 
It comes to a regenerative stop and sets the brakes. When I raise the, when I put the controller in this direction, it raises the hoist in the same direction. With no load, we can lift these containers up at around 590 feet per minute, very fast. That allows the operator to see the status of the spreader, which is the orange piece of equipment that is below us. That, that orange piece of equipment below us is what actually attaches to the containers themselves. So this is a feedback for the operator to see if he's properly attached to the containers. In addition to that, it has how much weight he's picking up, the wind speed, and the height of his hoist. All of these are, are aids to the operator to help him more efficiently discharge and load the container ships. So in this industry, uh, servicing a container ship, uh, we recognize that the uh, container ships will continue to get bigger and bigger. And we identified that even prior to the expansion of the Panama Canal, that, that in order to stay in the game, you have to be able to have the bursts and the crane outreach and, and the depth and the turning basins in your port to be able to handle the larger ships. And as it turned out, Ports America came to the table, they stepped up, they made the investment, uh, they delivered the berth, they delivered the cranes ahead of time, and we're well positioned now to, to be ready for the, the bigger ships to arrive uh, with the opening of the Panama Canal in 16.